Right. Uh, well, congratulations to One Cruncher. He takes game number one, and we are going to hop right into game number two here for the Team Speak TL Open number 10. Can Phoenix bring a game back in his court, or will One Cruncher just climb one more victory ahead? We're about to find out in just a moment. Link engaged. All right, and we are in game number two. Starting out here with our blue Terran, it is Phoenix from Team Fanatic. He is going to be spawning in the 12 o'clock position, the top portion of Lost Temple, and uh, his opponent, One Cruncher, the orange Protoss, will be spawning in the 3 o'clock position or the east position here on Lost Temple. So given that uh, Phoenix lost game one, this is going to be his map selection. So let, let's try to get a little bit into his head here. Uh, lost Temple, you know, you have the cliff, which isn't that great against Protoss, but it's something to bring up. Uh, the other thing is you, you have this really tight choke uh, outside of your natural, which tends to lend itself towards defensive play. Uh, you can block that off pretty easily and take a fast expansion. But, you know, what we've seen from Phoenix, he tends to not be the fast, the fastest of expanders he tends to be a little bit more safe a little bit more cautious uh so i'm wondering if we're going to see him change it up here in game two take a faster expansion or if he's got something else prepared here yeah i mean to get into any player's head is pretty difficult but i will just go based off of the history of the games that we have seen today in which uh banshee play has been somewhat of a focus you know also he's uh chosen kind of a mech route or a mech bio mix uh with the siege tanks in there but in these close positions i gotta imagine that banshee play is gonna immediately pop to his head like these are close positions there's a lot of damage that i could potentially do here so i almost expect it out of him based off of the way that we've seen him play throughout the entire day gateway is down for cruncher gas as well and the barracks is about to finish here for phoenix as we will see uh well the scout from cruncher will uh, make his way in and uh finally finally scout phoenix while uh phoenix is going to be a long time before the scout gets over there yeah look how lazy phoenix's scout was i mean uh cruncher's probe did an entire lap around lost temple before finally arriving uh, in phoenix's main base and he actually sent that out early enough that he still has time to uh gas phoenix so he's gonna put down that assimilator and then he doesn't even have any interest in staying. He's just going to jump out there and, and get the hell out of Phoenix's main base. Uh, meanwhile, in Cruncher's main base, putting down the Cybernetic score. And uh, I'm actually going to take a look at the APMs. Oh, my God. So in, in series number one, Cruncher was really low, like down at 120, 150. But if we bring up the APM tab, he's at like 70 right now. And uh, Phoenix is way up in the 300s. Yeah, um, he uh, he's definitely kind of uh, chilling over there, and uh, we did see it go up quite a bit. I was checking it in the battles uh, a little bit, but uh, yeah, yeah. So assimilator about ready to uh, go down. Another pylon, uh, including here. I'm not sure why this other marine is not beating away at the gas. It may be because he doesn't uh, particularly want it. He put the tech lab down and is actually going for concussive shells. So uh, I do kind of like this uh, already, just taking sort of a little detour here uh, in the, the grand scheme of things. But the uh, the assimilator does have vision of the tech lab and sees it swirling and bubbling away in there, so knows that something is happening. And uh, Cruncher's putting down two more gateways, uh, really trying hard to drive out this SCV. Going to use his probe, actually, to hit the SCV. SCV does escape with 3 HP and Phoenix as uh, kind of we discussed is actually putting down his command center after getting the uh, the first Marauder out. So he is doing a fast expand, a kind of a concussive shell expand which I do like. It's very safe and he's going to follow it up with two more barracks. Uh, meanwhile Cruncher looks like he's intent on uh, moving forward. He's got his gateways rallied and uh, actually his Zealot is going to get tagged here and going to get taken out by the uh, concussive shell equipped Marauders. Yep, free 100 minerals right there. Sentry's like, oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, and it goes back <laughs> up the ramp. He's like, I gotta get ready for a force field there. As uh, we just now have the warp gates opening up, second sentry out, so uh, he will have reinforcements here. But uh, Phoenix had no intention of attacking, only applying some pressure as he puts down a bunker, gets his command center up, 
three more, excuse me, two more barracks coming out here. So this could be a complete 180 from what we have seen early, possibly just getting out that early armor, uh, that early army, uh, of course, uh, with some heavy marauders and going for a very nice push here. Of course, uh, Cruncher, you know, I mean, he has some idea what's going on here, but his reaction is going to be crucial. And there we have the Nexus. Yeah, you, you know, Weed, I find a lot of players, even at the top level, don't tailor their builds enough uh, to the map. Like, yeah, they have an opening build order, but they don't ta tailor an entire strategy to the map. So, you know, what we saw in Zelnaga Caverns, it's a one versus one map, very easy to cut it in half, very easy to push through the middle with that mech. So we saw Phoenix go mech. Now we're on wide open Lost Temple. You know, I can't really imagine where you would put a siege line in the middle of the map that's going to control a, a lot of the the major areas of engagement of the map. So what do we see Phoenix do? We see him open with a fast expansion and three barracks. So I, I really, really uh, respect a player who can change his style like that. Yeah, and with the amount of Marauders out here, I think this army is actually going to get crushed. Here we're going to see a Stalker move up. The moment he gets hit with the concussive shell, um, he's like, okay. I'm out of here. And <laughs> the pylon is stopped too. And uh, that's a big victory for Phoenix there. People will be like, how was it a victory? He shot one concussion shell. And it's like he stopped the rush from even happening. He, he successfully put up these defenses, which are so great because he can sell them back too. So, uh, you know, he he's going to be able to sort of set his own pace here. Now we have a starport in the back, the engineering bay going up as well, and a reactor on the factory. Um, so a lot of different things that uh, that could be happening here. But uh, one thing's for sure, Cruncher's army has not necessarily been growing, uh, uh, I would say, as much as it needs to in preparation for what could be coming next. Yeah, and the reason for that is he's invested heavily going straight to uh, two base Colossi. We can see he's got the robotics facility up. He's chrono yep. boosted out his first observer, which went into Phoenix's main base, getting some scouting information there. And uh, and that, then he went straight over to the robotics bay, which is just about to finish up. You can see he's saving up 300 minerals, going to build that first Colossus, or go Thermal Lance. He could go either way. Looks like he's going neither way thus far, but just scouting out with that observer. Uh, meanwhile, we see Phoenix swap the reactor off the factory and switch it over to the starport, making uh, two medevacs now. And, you know, that this is a more traditional... Terran style that we've seen uh, back in the good old days, I guess, where the the bulk of your army is Marauders and Marines, and then you have this one starport uh, with a reactor where you can make medevacs, and when you see he started getting Colossi, you just switch over to Vikings. Yeah, and, um, you know, the reaction by uh, Cruncher to actually move his army into his base after seeing everything that's happening here. He's also going to see this push out. He knows the medevacs are coming out with more on the way. Um, it's a little bit surprising. Yes, he can defend himself, hoping, I think, at least to get a single Colossus out. And there is one uh, with the second one on his way. But gosh, he can, he's got to be careful not to put himself in a position where this army might be able to come in and do some serious damage here to this expansion they will clear out the stalker and i expect them to move down nope we're just gonna have the colossus sitting on the top and uh oh we're gonna have a drop in the back at the same time and it looks like it's a marine base drop they're gonna stim in and go in and just try to take down the stalkers and here comes the flank a two-pronged attack from phoenix moving up he's got to be careful force field's gonna cut him off but no oh there's the final force field that completely locks in phoenix Meanwhile, the drop in the main base is ongoing. Uh, Marine's doing a lot of damage here. Medivac still has energy and taking down these stalkers. Uh, but Phoenix actually is going to lose. Oh my god, he loses the Medivac. Uh, and the Colossus actually does get to live. Meanwhile, second Medivac up in the north side is actually going to escape. But the drop is shut down. Supplies telling us that uh, Cruncher is at 97. Phoenix down at 81. So, you know, yeah. having that observer, seeing the Medivac load up and dealing with it appropriately... Really, really paying dividends here for Cruncher. He completely destroyed that attack. Now I think he's going to feel really safe breaking these destructible rocks, taking the gold, and then transitioning to whatever tech he wants. Yeah, Phoenix, uh, unfortunately, did not get a lot of return for that particular drop. He's actually responding by putting down several more barracks in preparation for the army he's going to have to rebuild. He basically lost everything. And the one advantage he did have in that one is it did kind of split the army, forced him to go ahead and warp in all the units that he had up there. But uh, with the Colossus and the force fields at the front door, 
Um, he was able to take care of that with very, very minimal damage. And now you can see him starting to uh, rally here to the front. Now we have the secret expansion over here as the command center goes mm. down in the 9 o'clock position. And uh, unless an observer maybe saw an SCV traveling out, could have just been, you know, uh, scouting or whatnot. Um, he's probably not going to know about it. A few Vikings out as well. And uh, the Viking production will continue uh, but really not uh, an impressive army here for Phoenix at all. Um, I would say that right now, if uh, you know, if Cruncher just wanted to make a silly little push, oh my God, he's going to trap these guys and kill everything just about that he's got. We we also have a little bit of a drop at Cruncher's natural on the high ground. He's got oh. uh, two Marauders and three Marines up there. Just doing a little bit of harassment, that's that's really annoying. Cruncher moves in and cleans up uh, a bit of Phoenix's army. 10, or 109 supply for Cruncher, 113 for Phoenix, so he is a little bit uh, reclaiming the lead. A lot of stalkers coming down to clean this up, and uh, Blink is actually coming out of the Twilight Council, so that'll help him with the drops. This uh, 9 o'clock, nothing been done with it yet for Phoenix, but he's probably going to planetary that up. Yes, he's just begun that. Meanwhile, Phoenix continuing to be annoying with these medevacs. Going to drop, and he should probably get the hell out of there. No, nope. he's just going to see what uh, what Thermal Lance feels like, and it's not very good. No, it, it doesn't feel good it's at really all. Not good. It's a uh, burning sensation. It tastes like burning, all that stuff. So these drops continue to not be very successful, but here comes another potential foot push here by Phoenix. He does have, uh, I do see that he has a ghost there in that mix, a couple of siege tanks. And uh, only about four Vikings. So how will this be handled as he uh, prepares to take out that gold as well? And, of course, the observers here are seeing everything. So uh, that's even more of a reason to not think that they're... Oh, wait a second. Did that observer see all those SCVs transfer over to a base that was not done? Uh, he may have, but it, whether or not the Protoss was actually looking at the minimap uh, is another question. Uh, he's dealing with a few things over on his own. He's got some stalkers up here on the high ground. I believe he did take out one of the medevacs, unless it snuck away on a path that I did not see. You know, I'm, I'm a little bit nervous for Phoenix here because he's, he's getting a little bit greedy. He's trying to take his fourth base. And I think uh, this is a problem with playing Terran vs. Protoss and just playing it passively like this. I think Protoss is probably going to hit his timing and decide that he doesn't like Terran anymore and just completely steamroll right through here. We can see that Phoenix has largely Marauders. How many Marines are there? Well, there's two. And meanwhile, Charge, is it done? No, it's at like 90% completion. So I'm really nervous for Phoenix, especially if he gets aggressive like this, moving in with a lot of Vikings and a lot of Marauders. He's got to be really careful because the Protoss army looks pretty scary to me. Yeah, yeah, I agree. And you know what? Even scarier on the horizon as a storm is nearing completion as well. He'll be able to uh, deal with uh, several different units there with the High Templar, even if it's just, you know, using the storms. There's not really anything to use feedback on in this one unless he targets a ghost. He's also got plus two ground weapons coming up, making more probes to get this gold base all finished. And I wouldn't be surprised to see him take uh, a fourth year soon enough. But, you know, yeah. despite the fact that he has been so on the ball with uh, having those observers out, I'm surprised we haven't seen any little scout. And this base over here by Phoenix, you mentioned he was getting a little greedy, but... You know, sometimes greed equals risk, and uh, in this particular case, he's doing a good job, and uh, he took that risk, and it paid off. Now, he did try to scout down to see if that fourth exists, but uh, he was quickly dispatched by those stalkers. Fourth about to go up for Cruncher, and, and Phoenix looks content to just sit back and max out. How many barracks is he working up? He's got six barracks. Meanwhile, we have a bunch of gateways going on in the main base of Cruncher. Uh, I can't even click them all to, to group them together, but just suffice it to say... It's a lot, and something Cruncher does, which we will talk about after this engagement, as Vikings are moving forward, he's got two ghosts in here and a lot of Marauders. Looks like he wants to deal, oh my god, those Vikings are sniping down uh, Colossi really well, uh, taking a lot of damage there. One, uh, getting its shields completely taken down. Yet again, uh, half shields, ghosts moving forward, and he's going to stem forward and try to just sucker him into the ghost EMP. Ghost hitting uh, a little bit, but not the greatest uh, EMPs there. Bit of a blink. Taking out some Vikings, and I think Cruncher is getting the better of this. Uh, Phoenix might want to uh, just go back and chill if I was to give him some advice. But the <sighs> thing Cruncher does that I've never seen a Protoss do in PVT is get upgrades like crazy fast. 
He's working yeah. on plus three right now for his ground army, which is insane. We've got an unhappy face and an oh my god TT, and uh, lag. I don't know. Yeah, this I want to talk about that EMP. Um, uh, that EMP actually hit all the Colossus, which mm -hmm. I think Phoenix was like, oh, oh, now's my chance. I'm going with the Vikings, and then lost a bunch to the Stalker. <laughs> yeah. So it was kind of like one of those like looked really good, but not so much. Uh, none of the none of the Zealots got hit at all, and uh, we see some repositioning here of uh, Phoenix here. He's got a lot of medevacs out now. He's increasing his Viking count, but again. Uh, yeah. Pretty much nothing but marauders here on the ground army with the siege tanks. A few ghosts there as well. Ghosts kind of uh, stuck inside. And here we go. The siege is going to be put on. Vikings going to fly over. Hope to snag something. They're only going to get a couple of laser beams in the face as the stalkers fire away. Got some more marauders coming forward. And it looks like Phoenix wants to, to start a push here. Yeah. Oh, Ghost going to try to EMP. They EMP the Immortals. Zealots get hit a little bit. So it looks like Phoenix's game plan here is try to draw the army forward by baiting out with a few Marauders and then try to EMP. Looks like this is his timing. Sie Tanks are on siege and uh, Storm going off with the Zealots coming in and running away. And now here comes the flank. Big flank from the northern side. Looks like Cruncher's going to win that battle, but he may lose the southern one. A lot of Storms going off. And oh my god, he may just completely drive through here. More storm going off. Zealots flanking in from the northern side. Another storm going off. Medivacs taking oh. a ton of damage. That storm, oh my god, feedbacks! And oh, the Medivacs get taken out. The Marauders get taken out. Phoenix gets taken out. As Cruncher is now at 132 supply. Phoenix at 110. But a Terran army takes longer to re rebuild than a Protoss who's sitting on a million bajillion warp gates such as Cruncher. Yeah, that actual attack was totally sick by Cruncher. He took, like, like all the units you wouldn't expect him to take out of position. Hold on one second as he's going to move forward and try to take on this now morphing into a planetary uh, expansion with a few marauders in the back. But look at this single Templar and Storms dealing with that. He's going to take out a bunch of SCVs as well, morphing in some Archons. But he had, like, he had, I think, probably five immortals and his final colossi he didn't even engage the main army with the colossi he sent them around in the back where they were easily killed by the vikings but then he killed everything else behind that line now going after this planetary cannot keep up with uh, the damage output more marauders coming in from the back and uh, those will get taken out as well and look at the army that is being resupplied here by cruncher Jesus. Uh, you know it, it, it's looking better and better for him, just chipping away and uh, maybe able to get rid of that stone golem shell around Phoenix. <laughs> yeah, his aura, his shields are down. But, uh, you know, this isn't Brood War. You can't, you can't play Terran versus Protoss half map like this anymore. Uh, Protoss, if they're controlled well, just, just so strong. And Phoenix's harassment just got shut down the entire game. This is a result. Some Archons strolling over to see the Marauders, and now they decide to finally start attacking but that's gonna get taken out but i i don't think cruncher really cares all that much he's oh my god a mothership how did oh. i not see that on the production tab oh and it gets scanned and he knows exactly what is happening but can he uh be ready for it that he just lost uh of course uh two expansions he's flying over his main he has no scans really at all i guess he does on that third that's flying over he's got uh, a couple he can drop down um so this will be interesting to see how he's going to actually use it amount of energy 82 uh so he can't vortex or recall yet he's going to go ahead and move in great emp really taking out a lot of those zealots Ooh. but again just might not be too much storm going down feedback on the medevacs and even if it doesn't kill the medevacs, if they can't heal, they oh are God. just flying pieces of junky metal. And now he'll make his way into the gold. There's the scan to reveal the units under the mothership. Oh, and he is sucked in to a GG. I cannot <laughs> believe it, Cruncher. I, I, you know, wow. Just what wow. What a hero. Dude, wow. Major, I, you know. major Protoss hero, dude. Damn, where is, now I want to be a Cruncher fan that I was talking about, you know, at the start of the cast. Where is this guy's replay pack? That was some God. sick PVT, Wheat.
Yeah, you know what else is sick? Because I always like to see, like, you know, what could have happened right there, you know? Well, we have four more Zealots and uh, six more High Templar on their way, all with the energy to drop at least a storm there. You know, that was just awesome and really i give all the success of that victory to cruncher in that battle at his zelnaga where he split his army and you know i don't know what went through his mind in order to split that um uh, or <laughs> why he decided to do what he did but it couldn't have worked out any better for him and uh, just had a, a immensely larger army to uh, finish this game off. I cannot, I cannot believe it. That was awesome.